Hey everybody and welcome back to E4. My name is Sue and I'm going to be working on this awesome crazy quilt with you guys. Now this is block two. There's three videos ahead of this one which is going to step by step carefully show you how to set up these guys. So we're going to be moving a little bit faster. Every series of these I'll be going a little bit faster. You may have to refer back but I hopefully should cover everything. So I'd like to say first of all please subscribe to the channel if you like this video then hit the like button. Uh, share with everyone. This is going to be a fantastic series and if you haven't joined our Facebook group called OML Embroidery University go over there and join away. This is where you can post your homework. You can see what other people are doing and it's a great place to be. All right let's get started. Now this this is the block that we're making. I want to quickly point out that the spider web in the background is actually fabric. So this is not stitched. The only stitched part is the boo. Um, these are motif stitches, these cute little pumpkins. I showed them a bit closer. I think it's a little bit blurry. It's a blurry to me. Or my glasses are dirty. I'm not really sure. Um, we're going to work on this today. We're going to start with the fun stuff and then we're going to put everything together. Mr. Pumpkin, not sure what happened there, but we're going to fix them. I think that's a jump stitch. Um, and we stuck to the same routine. So we divided it up differently, um, but we have some really the same colors and I actually use the same fabric. So you know, it works really well. So this one is a little more complicated than the one we did before. Through the magic of editing, I'm going to put this block so you guys can see it so we can refer to it. Now, the next thing I want to do, let's get rid of these guys. Oh, right. I'm up in my studio and my delete button doesn't work. So I have to use the mouse. You guys can just Hit the delete button on your computer screen and it'll work dandy. It just doesn't work for me. And we're going to bring in, uh, in the image of the fancy pumpkin, I called it. And it's really cute and it's really small. Now this is the picture of the stitches and we're just going to keep that for reference. It's perfect and it's a perfect template to work over. Now it matches the background because I just simply took a screenshot and so don't get confused. Now you can tell right over here that it's an image not actual stitches. So now we are going to create this uh, as basically as a motif stitch but a little bit different. We are going to make it continuous and I'm going to show you a few little tricks on how to do this but we aren't actually going to save it as a most motif stitch because there's more than one color and this is how to do it properly. So what I did is when I, after I created this, I saved it in my clip art folder. And so you can just, when you have stuff in your clip art folder, uh, you can just drag it to the screen. And so I did crazy quilt blocks and all the pieces that I'm working on. So it's kind of handy. So, okay, so we have to do this a little bit differently. Now I'm going to show you guys how to set up for it. Now, remember, we really are working small on this one. This motif is less than an inch. I think it's an inch and a half this way and an inch this way. So really small. So we got to pay attention to what we're doing on this one. So we're going to make this circle kind of that size. Let me see if that's going to work. Little bit bigger, little bit bigger. Now, if you're wondering what I'm doing, just hold on. You guys will figure it out momentarily. That should work. Okay. That's good enough. Now, this is how you can set up to make continuous items. So let's hit control because we want this straight across. Hit enter. Now you don't have to worry about jump stitches or anything like that. This is just a base. And if you were to draw it out and scan it um, and keep it as an image, that would be handy as well. Um, then you can just bring it in and digitize over it and you don't have to worry about, you know, moving it or anything. I am actually going to group. It's all green. Green seems to be the color of the day. 
I am going to group that guy together so we don't have any problems. And we could probably lock it down too, couldn't we? Why don't we do that? And then we're not going to touch it. So this simple design is how you create fantastic motif designs. So this is one side of the motif and this is the other side of the motif. So when you put them together, they attach. Now let me show you what I mean. Let me show you guys how this works. Let's bring in block one. Oh, except for we're on block two. Sorry about that, block two. We are gonna bring in the fancy pumpkin design. Look at how small it is, we gotta remember. Okay, so now that being said, that being done, I have to make my immediately the first thing I need to do. I know I'm jumping back and forth and I apologize, but I want to make sure this is right. I need to make this a whole buttload smaller. So I was doing it wrong. So this circle is less than three inches. So we're going to make it a little bit smaller. So size it to that. Let's bring this guy in and just sit him here. It can go even smaller. You guys will pick up on this in just a minute. Just let me fiddle around. I, I sometimes like to make mistakes kind of on purpose um, or not, as the case may be, just so I can show you guys, you know, to stop, fix what you were doing, and then go back to, because otherwise you'll forget what you need to change. So we have this one motif stitching out. Now it starts here and it goes all the way. It does the green and let's not do that, edit, undo. It does the green and ends right here. So when we take this and we right click and we slide, we put these two together and it connects and there's no jump stitches. Now all we have to do here is move the colors. So it'll stitch out all the orange and it'll stitch out all the green. Now this green will start here and go up, do this part, and back and then do the next one. So it is continuous. Now you can have a jump stitch between the two pumpkins or we can try hiding the stitch in there. I went for the jump stitch because I didn't think it would work out, but you know what, it might and it's a good, it would be better if we could hide the jump stitch. So let's get working on this guy. So this is why you do the circle. Now these angles going across are just, you know, so I can get everything even. Um, we need to lock this back down again though, don't we, right? Oh, it's the right size, yep, oh, oh, oh. I just don't wanna forget anything. Let's bring our image behind. Now, more than one way to do this pumpkin. I added the detail work um, on the pumpkin, like the, the different parts. Now, this isn't carved, this is just three tatami um, points on itself that looks like this. Now, it is a bit detailed, so let's put this there and we want to set it up that the pumpkin, because remember we're doing this for, specifically for the crazy quilt. So this line here is going to be our satin stitches. Um, and that's how we, and don't worry about this is coming out. So we want the pumpkin to sit on the satin stitches because if we were to move this down and center it all um, like this, then it's going to stitch over the satin stitches and it will leave a bump and we don't actually want that. But you see how we connect them? It's, it's actually really cool. Okay, so we get that, we get how it's gonna set up. Let's start with our orange. So we're going to just do a fill stitch. Now we can do it easy and we can do it a little more complicated. Really the detail work doesn't show up that much because these are really small. So always remember to digitize at the size you want your final to de design to be because we really, really have to watch the amount of detail that we're putting in because generally it's just not going to show up because we're doing small, right? We do not want satin stitches, not thinking that's cool. So let's change it to, uh, to Tommy. And it's a fill. 
See how I did that? Now let's change it to orange so we can see what we're doing. Click, orange, there we go. So we've got that and you see, you can still tell it's a pumpkin and I just went around the outside of it, which it will look absolutely fine when you stitch it out. Honestly, like I said, you really can't see the detail work that I did, but I thought it was fun to do. So I'm gonna zoom in just a smidgen more and let's do it this way now. And I'll just show you guys that everything will connect and I'll show you guys a couple of tricks that'll make it look really good. So I'm just following the lines here and we're gonna hit enter and we're gonna fiddle with them in a minute. Oh, why don't I pick to Tommy first? Why, why, why? I'll fix that in a minute. So you want a tiny bit of overlap. Remember, we're really working small here. And there we go, little bit of overlap. And we want it up under here because we want it to be covered. Hit enter. Yay, I picked a Tommy. And then a little bit of overlap again. There we go. See, easy peasy. Easy peasy. So either way, it's pretty easy. It's just fill stitches. We can do this. We can do this. And there we go, let's pick our select tool. Let's go back and change this to tatami because I forgot. Now, that looks pretty good. That would stitch out just basically as you see it. I might tweak these a little bit. That could go up a little bit more. Meh, it's okay for now. Nice little trick that you can do for detail work at any size, um, but it works especially well for small, is go ahead and change the angles. Now, do you see how that looks different than that part? It's a fantastic trick. Let's do this one. So we want to put this one maybe just down a little bit. And you see it does look different. Let's do the third one. It's just a nice little detail trick without adding, you know, a whole bunch of detail work to it because we're working so small. See, now that gives it a whole different look. Look at this one. Whoops, let's go back here. Look at this one compared to that one. Okay, that kind of looks like an orange cloud, but you know what I mean. So the last thing we have to do with these orange things, because I wasn't paying attention, is do the closest join. So then it'll stitch. Let's look at it, because this is important to do. It will stitch, and let's look at the end is there. Starts there, ends there, goody. And this one is going to start in the same spot and there's no jump stitches. So it's literally gonna stitch this one, then this one, then this one. Now, for connecting this to the other side, because you remember we put another pumpkin down and the pumpkin's gonna go about here. Now that's gonna be a jump stitch or a trim. I thought the trim looked neater, but you could do a little running stitch. Now remember this is gonna be satin, so you could tuck it right beside or you could follow along here and it would be underneath. And straight, if you do it out to the edge here or even out here, it will connect it. So we could do it that way or let it go as a trim, whatever you prefer. Either, either way works. Um, like I said, I opted for the trim, but if you don't have trim on your machine, then go ahead and make a connection. It won't look bad. You might be able to see it, but it won't look bad. Okay, so now for the fun part, and that is making swirlies. And you can go up higher. We, you, we will be using this for the next block as well because we're gonna be making a really cute cauldron motif and we can make the smoke rising from the cauldron. So you can do whatever design as you want as long as it starts here and finishes here. That's the only thing. And it is all in one piece, including this, because we want all the green to stitch out next. So that's why we did this little design here. So we know um, where we want it to start and where we want it to fish finish. It really works out well. So I'm going to do this uh, in, I guess, a running stitch to start off. Mm, 
You could do backstitch maybe, but remember again, we're really small. So, okay, let's do this. So you wanna make sure, you wanna remember how small we're doing it. So you wanna make sure there's enough space between everything or you won't be able to, you know, really see the swirlies well enough. If you're doing it really close together, it's just going to be green. And we don't really want that because we want the swirlies. Now, remember, you have to start here and you can go up here. You can swirl around. I thought it was really nice covering the pumpkin. So I'm going to follow along here. Um, this one is OK. Now I'm just right clicking. And now when you're here, you can't go back here because it's going to be a jump stitch and that's going to look weird when you stitch it out and you don't want to have to be trimming anything there. So we're just going to backtrack on it and we're going to do the same for this cute bottom one. And again, make it longer, make it swirlier, however you want. Just don't make it too small. You may have to test them out a little bit um, to get it to look exactly how you want. And it is so worth the time to get it exactly how you want. If you want more swirlies, I happen to think they look fantastic. And it's an added, you know, detail. This, uh, these um, embellished crazy quilts are all about detail. So basically, if you make this pumpkin once, you can use it many, many times. And if you want it to be less or less swirly or whatever, you can just go in and modify your original one. That's the beauty of a working file. So for example, um, when I'm done that swirly, I went into this part because that's going to hide my connection. So let's make this one a little bit bigger. Now, remember, we have to go and backtrack, right? I know this seems tedious, but the end result is so fantastic. Now, I'm going to go right here, and I am going to press Enter. And that is orange. How about we make it a little bit of a weird color just so we can see what we're doing. Let's step back a little bit. See, that's kind of cute. You may want to, you know, move this around as long as you start and finish there. So play around with it. The easiest way to play around with it is go into node mode and just maybe round things off. I call it tweaking. Not sure if it really is. But if you want it to be swirlier, remember though that you backtrack. I made a mistake on that one and I pulled one side and not the other because you don't want it to double up too much and look, you know, too thick. Some parts can be thick, it's a nice effect, um, but you don't want too much of it to be thick. So we ended off right here. So we came here, we went, and then we went back and we stopped right here. So um, what we wanna do now is just this little part and we want it to be fill stitches. Um, we don't want, you know, satin stitches, although it's small enough, it just didn't quite look right and it didn't cover, cover up these very well. I liked how it looked, but if you want to choose that, that's fine. So we just go ahead and do it and we're going to do closest join after. I actually started exactly where I should, so it should be perfect. I wouldn't have to. Now, again, on this one, make sure you change the angle. If you like that angle, that's fine. Let's make it the same color, though. If you like the angle, which to me, it's fine, that's great. We ended here. Remember this little cross here is where we ended, and I want it to... I want it to go right here for the end because I'm going to start on this part. Um, it might be helpful actually to make your template, your motif template, a uh, different color so we don't get confused, but I'm good with this. So let's do this. And remember, we see where the white cross is? That's where we ended. And we are just going to keep doing our swirlies. Now, I made a mistake that I always make. And if it happens to you, it's very frustrating. Um, what happened here? Oh my goodness. So I had that selected and I didn't realize I had select had it selected. And I went ahead and I picked up another tool and I clicked on it and it changed it from the tatami stitch 
to an outline stitch. So if that happens to you, just make sure you check to see, see this is, I, I can do it again right here, click and it changes. Um, frustrating. It took me a little while to figure that out. Why does it keep changing? I just want to do a running stitch. That's why. So just go back, deselect everything. Now you can select your tool. So hopefully that saves you guys a little bit of uh, hassle because it drove me nuts. See now what happened there? I keep doing this and I'm kind of doing it on purpose is that I had the picture selected so nothing happened again. So try not to get frustrated. The first thing if you can't pull up a tool is check to see if you have something selected, even the picture. It took me like four times to actually select the picture, but it certainly is simple to do it by accident. So up, you could make that a little swirlier. Let's go down. And I thought just a curve in there was cool. You might want to do your ending a little bit. It's nice to have, remember this is our satin stitch on our quilt block. It's nice to have a little bit below and a little bit crossing over. I thought these ones looked fantastic. Now, you don't have to end right there. You could put it up and around sort of thing as long as it's in that general area so we can connect it. Now look how good that looks. That is fantastic. So let's multiply our guy. Let's get rid of the extra stuff. So I'm going to get rid of this guy and my delete doesn't work. All right, there we go. I'm so used to using it and we'll use the flat pumpkin. So let's unlock and delete. So unlock and we're gonna delete probably, what do you think? Delete, yeah, I guess so. I guess we'll delete it, we don't need it anymore. You can design another one. And we need to delete the picture. And we'll do that right here. It's hard to, it's hard to tell. I probably should have changed the background. So DEL, delete. Wow, that looks terrible, but let's bring our, our pumpkin part in there. Now it looks better. How about we make this purple? How about we make it green? Because I think that would look a lot better. So what do you guys think? This is what we created first, and this is what we've got. So let's go delete right here, delete, and make sure you save this guy. I called it Fancy Pumpkin, but call it what you want. Let's check the size, one and a half by one. That is some small work, but look how good it looks. Oh, and it's gonna stitch out beautifully. So I just dragged a bounding box around the whole thing. I'm gonna right click, and when I place it, you can see the shadow of it. We wanna place it wherever we end it, because we know where we started. So place it wherever it ended. There you go, and you can just simply do that again. And that piece there looks kind of nice with that extra dip in it. And then all you have to do is change the sewing order, and we want to do two pumpkins, and do it that way. And then all the green stitches out in order. Now, remember again, you're going to either have a jump stitch here, there's not a whole lot we can do about it, or you can very carefully from the bottom corner to the next one, do a running stitch to connect them, and you probably will not notice it on the final uh, product when you're stitching it out. You probably won't see it. It could save you a lot of time. I'm always for connections. So if that's what you want to do, go for it. All right, let's watch this guy stitch out. Um, underlay, yes, it's pretty small. We could do without the underlay. Um, I forgot to take it off, but we could actually really do without the underlay. Let me speed this up. Underlay does make it nice, however, too fast. So there was a jump stitch there, that's fine. Let's see what it does for the green. I'll slow it back down for the green. If you're wondering where the control part is, uh, it's on my other screen, it just makes it easier for me. Isn't that cool? Look at it go.
I'm going to stop the stitch simulator right there. Did you guys see a problem? Did you guys see what happened? Um, this is why I usually use the stitch simulator, even if I'm just doing something as simple as this, because I caught a mistake and it's better to catch the mistake now than when you're stitching it out and you have a ton of jump stitches. So it is generally a good idea to take off your true view. Um, we want that, we want the true view off, sorry. And look, what, what, what happened? How come there's jump stitches? How come? Well, because I forgot to double check. And let's go into node mode and you can see it starts up here and it finishes here. No way, man, I didn't set it up like that. But we traded over and now it looks like it's right. And because we copied and pasted this dude, he's gonna be the same. No, it changed to nearest connection. So how about we try this again? I am gonna take one of the underlays off. So underlay, first underlay, yeah, that's pretty thick. We don't need it that thick. I am going to actually change of mind. Let's do a light zigzag. And I think that would be better. Underlay is important. We just don't need it too thick on this. Okay, let's do this again. Maybe I got it right. Let's try. Let's try. So here we go. Okay, that's a better amount of underlay. I like it. Speed it up for the pumpkins. Jump over to the next one. Oh, faster. Okay, so they're stitching out nicely, and I do like the shape. You could play around with the angles if you wanted to, the stitch angles, but I think this looks perfect the way it is. Now, let's watch our green stitch out and see if we got it right, and then we'll be ready to save it. So over to the green. Yeah, look at that. Exactly how I wanted. Phew, so much better. I love it. And that back stitch is gonna look really nice. So remember, check your underlay, check your sewing order, make sure you've made the right connections. That is super fantastic. Now, when you're stitching this out on your block, it's gonna be great because it's just gonna do all the green all the way across. And honestly, there's a little wow factor to it, and I think you guys are gonna love it. That is making some really good connections and making a really, fancy motif for our block two in this crazy quilt section. So this is probably my favorite block. I'm not really sure. So that's how you make the motif. So practice. And once you get uh, it down pat of how they connect, the sky's the limit. In the next one, we're going to do a cauldron with smoke and three colors. So we're going to kick it up a notch every time. So for now, this is good. This is how you make a fancy motif that's going to look fantastic in our crazy quilt. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.